Today we're at Succulents Australia and we're looking at Androbiscus, which is a very varied genus of plants from South Africa. James Lucas has been interested in these plants for a number of years and he's going to take us through a tour of his Androbiscus collection. There's links to resources in the notes below the video and as this is a rather long video, grab yourself a cuppa, sit back, relax and enjoy the tour of Androbiscus. Yeah, Andromiscus, for a genera, are one of the most varied groups within a, within a group that you can actually find. Now, originally, they were combined with cotyledons and, uh, as one group. But what it is, is cotyledons actually have opposite leaves, whereas these are alternating. So you see, alternate, alternate here, alternate there. And that's what distinguishes these two genera and made them separate. So they were separated later on when botany became a bit more precise. Now there's another one here that looks a bit cotyledon-like and the flowers, believe it or not, are slightly similar but a little bit different. The only one that really looks like a cotyledon flower is this fella here, which is uh, Philips A. This has a beautiful bright red flower, nearly an inch long, comes right quite tall and big long drooping bell-like flower. So this is, is a true exception of all the other flowers within this grouping. And what time of the year do these flower? Oh, they'll be flowering in about another month or so, which is about December, January period. Right, so summer flowering. Yeah, and you can see they've all got buds on them now, John. Yeah, they're all coming up now. They'll start, to, they'll start within another month that you'll see more colour on them and things like that. Now, look, the main group that people really like, it's Mariano. And Mariana are incredibly varied. We would have probably 25, 20 to 25 different versions of Mariana here, to give you an idea. See, this one here is a Mariana. This one here, this is the more popular sort of form of Mariana. And you get some fatter leaves, narrower leaves. This one is sort of dark, long and thin. This is a very unusual one. This is one that has a yellow variegation on the end of the leaves. This one is actually really quite rare. It's a reasonably new introduction. And these older leaves now are just getting a little bit past it. And we've got a new batch of leaves coming out. And this is Mariano Antidorcartum. And this is Antidorcartum with a red mutation. So they have a lot of color variations and leaf shape variations. Okay, this is Mariana Immaculatus, and it's immaculate because it just has, you know, really plain but smooth, immaculate looking leaves. But the main distinctive feature with Mariana, they always have this horseshoe shape in them. As the leaves get older, they often end up with a slightly horny edge around the edges of them. And nearly all Marianas have this in one form or another, this horseshoe shape. That is one thing that is quite distinctive about this group. And there will always be one or two exceptions. And um, Antidorcartum, it sort of has it, but not really. So that's one that does not, but it is still a Mariano type. Now what defines these, there are five flower types within Andromiscus. And each species has the same sort of flower. See, this is another Mariano here. Absolutely minute, but again, see the horseshoe shape in here. And this does have them in this area there. Hard to see, but you can see another Mariana here, that's Elviolatus. So, and it, this really brings up a lot of questions about whether the naming is correct on a lot of these. Should there be more names or not? This is one of the areas that I really find interesting about Andromiscus. Here you have Cristatus. Now this is quite a popular one. And there are three or four major variations of this one. Recently, I got on a recent import from Japan, we got the silver leaf version of this, which sort of has a black frill down there. So it's really quite different. Um, this is another one. We got another one here, Cooperi. This is the most common and or popular. Often called plover's eggs, because it's a spotted thing. And we have several forms of this, and I'll show you another one later. There's a new one here we have white seal pups, they're very white leaves, and we now have a new version, just imported this year, a black leaf version of this one. This is really fantastic. So what sort of um, potting mix for these? 
right, very open, very loose and open. And also, Andromiscus really like quite high light. So in this house, we have them near the front where less shading. This is the front of the house, so the sun, they're facing north really, and they like a lot of light. And they're more open growing plants. And these are often found growing in crevices in rocks. But I do like a loose open mix. You can add a little bit of pumice. You can sort of see in here, it's quite, quite good gravels. It'll have some pumice. Uh, a bit of koi, maybe perlite to open it up. So drainage has to be very good. And these are really autumn, winter and spring growing and they really like to rest over summer so you can really dry them out in summer. So in, you wouldn't be growing them in full sun? Not full sun because actually a lot of these plants actually grow in crevices in rocks and cracks in rock. And you'll probably find that they might miss out on on the harshest sun. But some actually grow right out in the open in nature, but some are hidden away. But they can take full sun, definitely. And watering? Water well, but infrequently. Oh, more over the winter months. And one of the things you really want to watch out for is things like this here. This is the uh, Mariana alveolatus. They're a bit hairy, a bit furry. This makes them a bit vulnerable to uh, mold and things like that, or you know, rots, dry rots in winter, you really have to keep these plants in a well ventilated position and allow to dry out after watering. Well, you might water them in the morning so that they're well and truly dry by night time. So, and you just imagine in the wild, even if they get, ra get rain on, they'll have wind on them. So you've got to allow good airflow for these plants. So watering from below could be an option as well? well definitely. Um, we have so many here, it's a bit hard to water from below, but you would water from below, definitely. But you do have the good ventilation in here. Ventilation, yeah, we have this right near the open door. We'll show you some other species here. This is Trigonus. Very colourful, a rather flat leaf, but really lovely colours. And that's very compact. If you overwater this, the leaves can actually double in size. So actually, this is the indication to me that this is uh, pretty, pretty much the right conditions. The leaves are quite compact. That's the way they should be. That's another trigonus there. Now another little beauty we have here is subdistitious. Now this grows in crevices in the rocks, and it will. You can sort of see it. It's it's a very small quite slow growing. You know, one year it might only grow five or six leaves up here. So this plant is several years old, quite a few years old. And you've got a lot of these in reasonably deep pots? Yeah, I, I think, look, they will grow in a shallow pot, but you can see that they, I think they struggle a bit in a shallow pot. This one here is like, that's, that's the red Mariano. Um, it's a bit shallow. It could be better, that plant. I actually think that should be a bigger pot. For that plant. Yeah, that comes from Kumamaberg. That one there. Now, what's another one here for you? Now, this is a little bit like, you know, your normal cotyledons. This is Procurvus. It's a red form of it. And there's, oh, yeah, there's one thing I would, would like to mention about uh, Mariana. A lot of them are what we call cortex forming. Now, that is, they form a hard, a big hard root. Now if you look down there carefully, you can see all, it's all a big old root. This is a very old plant, this one. It's one of my first Mariano types. I'd say this would be about seven or eight years old. Might even be more than that. You can sort of see it's old roots in there. And this is forming like a big lumpy root under there with buds coming off it, with all the tops coming off. And you should theoretically go around and pull the old leaves off, especially when they're getting the new ones for this year. You get a pair of tweezers to do this, but they should all be pulled off because you really want air to go amongst all your, all your leaves to keep it airy. And these can, be very, can, um, can become very tight and compact and you end up with lack of air movement. So that's why we try and lift them up, put plenty of gravel underneath them help with the air movement. And propagation of these? Really, believe it or not, they're actually easy. Um, 
they all leaf propagation, but there's always an exception to every rule. Phillips eye here does not grow from leaf. I have tried, definitely does not. So what you have to do with a Phillips eye, you have to get, you have to take off some of these cuttings here. That's why this one's actually quite slow to, to get going. This is the one with the big red flowers. It looks like a cotyledon. And if you were going to sort of take the pups off or divide that, when would you do that? Probably in the start of the growing season. So not over the summer months. I would probably prefer to do this in autumn or, and or spring. Probably not in the dead of winter. That's when you can get some sort of fu some fungal issues and it's a bit sensitive over winter. So, you know, overwintering these, they do like their water then, because that's really when they want to grow. But often the indication of a plant, a plant's optimum growing period and happy period is when they flower. So right now, these should be having water and fertilizer because they're growing happy and healthy. Actually, this one here is really nice. This is um, one I found an old collection a while back called Blossianus. I really like this one. It's a, it's a Mariano type. With beautiful edges to it, lovely colour. And it's got plenty of sun. If too much shade, this is just a green plant. Yeah, now, here we have, this is from collections. Now, I don't actually know what these two are. I'm going to hope I'll find out this year. The flowers should tell a story this year. Which species to go to, then I can look at it. But that's uh, beautiful red spots. This is a bit like maculatus, which I don't have in this house here, but I'll show you later. But it's not maculatus. It's different form, different habit. Um, this one, the leaves drop off really easy. So it's actually really hard to dispatch. And you can see this one's obviously a bit of a problem with leaves too, because look, some of the leaves are just laying around the pot here. So maybe they've been knocked off with watering or something like that. John, I thought I'd show you this. A lot of Cristatus, have a hairy stem with aerial roots. I originally used to think they're hairy, but they are aerial roots. And you can actually see a couple of little white tips growing here and there. There's a white one in there. But yeah, end up hairy stems. So they end up like a little shrub with a hairy trunk on them. Make an interesting sort of specimen plant, really. Beautiful, like mini bonsai or something like that. So yeah, a lot of these plants form little trunked shrubs. These are a lot of our mother plants. Some we don't have perfect naming of. There's still a bit to be learned from them. That's your sort of anti cartons here. Some of your Mariana there. There's another form of Cristatus over there. That's a new version here, this one here. This is a beautiful dark one. This is the black form of Clan William. Normally this is grey with spots. But this is a black form that we've sort of developed. So this is how you get a lot of variations coming through. Remember I showed you Cristatus a while back? This has the hairy stems on it. This is a lovely one we picked up in Japan. We believe this one come from, comes from Gamtu's River and it goes grey with lovely spots on it with a dark line on top. So the other Cristatus is quite green. This will end up really quite bright grey. One of my little treasures, this one. This is Mariana Harley. It's a beautiful red edge on it, pink form. And this is quite a few years old, very slow growing. Only puts on a few leaves a year. And this is what makes Andromiscus sometimes quite a bit rare and hard to collect because you just don't get many leaves off them. This group of plants here is a recent new collection I got from a collector in China. And he's a really keen collector. Uh, this is a hybrid, a new hybrid. So you can see this is a Mariana. This will be like a Kermanberg type, but hybridised with another one. Now, I don't quite know which one it is. And you can see, I've actually picked off some of the leaves here, and you can see them. It's calloused, forming roots, and getting ready to grow. Look at that one. This one here, new bud showing. Look at that. This is how you grow them. So, on the special ones, we're inclined to pull the leaves off. I leave them laying around the plant because this is probably in nature how they would fall off and develop and they seem to root well. Here we have a couple of very unusual ones. This is a really dark spotted one. This is a huge round red spotted leaf. Now over here, this is quite a rare one. This is the dark side. Brian Macon, the dark side. 
another. These are really unusual ones, these ones. So this, at that stage there, these are ready to pot up or put into a tray to get growing. And they'll grow a bud and grow. So quite easy to grow. This looks like a Schulianus type. We have a couple of filler callers. This is a grey form with spots. Now over here, this in summer, this has been growing in a bit of shade. This goes the most unbelievable bright red. This is one of the stars, I reckon, from, from the point of view of looks in good light. Brilliant red spots, really brilliant. A few more special forms that we got from overseas. Now this is a uh, Mariana Clan William, but this is actually a miniaturized version. So it's quite tiny, whereas the other leaves are really quite long, very ungainly to send, but this will be much more compact. That's a really lovely form, that one. And over here, this will be Schuldianus. I can show you a better one of that later on. But these are a couple of new hybrids we're getting. This is sort of Mariana hybrids. And another one here, really lovely. So here we, have, we do have a few hybrids coming on. Now this one, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you what this one cost, but it was disgusting. Uh, but I couldn't resist it. Beautiful grey Mariano type, very rare. Don't quite know which one it is, but I know what it was worth. We're just on our way to another house to look at some more Adramiscus, but we couldn't help noticing these absolutely wonderful lithops, and we'll be coming back with a video on those very soon. This is a group of um, our new young plants coming on that we'll be selling this year. Uh, some of these plants have actually been growing already for nearly a year before they came here. There's one I should show you. This is the absolute most miniature form of Mariana. Absolute tiny, there's my fingernail there. You know, it gives you an idea. This is the cutest little one of all. Beautiful. This Mariana is the bright red, round leaf red form. This comes originally from Japan. And here you have some alveolatus. That's the gray, green one here. Yeah, some more Marianos. You can see there's the fat leaf form and the normal form. Another Mariana. This one's a little spheroid, almost perfectly round little balls. And again, you can see the horseshoe shape in the top of the leaf there with the horny edge on it. And we think this is a Cristatus form with a long leaf Cristatus form. Yeah, we call this one Hemisphericus, another really small tight one, and we also have a lovely variegated version of this one too. It's a bit slower growing, but it's a very nice plant when it gets going. This one here is Elstoni, silver leaf, good nice white spots on it. This is a tall growing shrub. This will probably grow up to 18 inches tall. Can get a little bit untidy at times, but you can prune it up. Now this is again coming back to Cooper Eye. Now this is the new one we have. It's called White Seal Pups. Now it's a dark version, but later on you can see that the leaves here go quite pale. They'll go almost white with more sun and spotted. This is a very attractive form. People really chase this one. Yeah, this is Maculatus. This is one we haven't talked about before. Gets the dark brown edge, big flat leaf. Very nice plant. And you can actually see they're just beginning to flower. Here we go. Here's some a couple of flowers there. This house is a bit warmer. We heat these houses, so these have had a bit more warmth over winter. But you wouldn't normally grow them this way? No, I, I, I prefer them in cool weather. This actually gets a bit humid, yep. so we have to watch our ventilation in here pretty hard for these andromiscus. Now actually here, this is quite interesting. This, this is a whole batch of new imports. Now remember I talked a while back about the bright red filicolus. This one's had more light. Look how bright red that is, and it will go redder as summer comes on. So here we have about 25 new varieties I got from a friend Kevin in Korea. He travels the world, and he actually like, likes andromiscus like I do. So he really is a bit of a collector. And um, this one called Blossianus. Mariana Blossianus, it, it does have the slightly hollowed leaf, not quite horseshoe, but it gets this beautiful dark edge, frilly edge on it, beautiful plant. Now some of these in Asia, they don't worry about the names as much as what we do, but this one's called Molothi. Now I've yet to prove it, I'm waiting to see the flowers on it, and we'll see what happens. 
Now, this is Christatus again. This is another form of Christatus, but we call it Indian clubs. Now, this is the form we actually have in Australia. And the one we have here is good because the leaves really go a good red color. If you look in there, you can see the hairy aerial roots on this one. But what's really interesting, here we have the compact form. And you can see yourself, much more compact, half the size, smaller leaf, and I'm sure it'll have red hairy stems too, which it does, but much more compact form. So for those that do it, so there are many variations within one species. This is a new one for Australia. This is Christatus sholandi. And you can see the leaf is entirely different. Now, the difference is, what's happened is Andromiscus grow over reasonable areas of South Africa. But in different regions, they've evolved in di on different hills or different districts. They've evolved in different ways over the years. So it means that there's no cross-pollinations and they've ended up with their own style. So even though this is the same species, they're really quite different in the shape of the leaf, everything, colour, size often growing. So already we've probably now seen today, John, about four different types of uh, Christatus, maybe five types I've shown you. And Cooperi is the same. Here we have Cooperi with a difference. This gets a really pale edge along the top, beautiful dark colour, and ultimately they reckon it goes blue-red colour. So let's wait and see. But I've been told that this is a really good one. Now this one they call Black Monster. Now I reckon this one's outstanding. Look at that beautiful green edge, dark tip, because this house holds a lot of light. It brings out the colour. That's a superb plant. I'm really looking forward to growing that one. This for me is one of my favourites. Brian Macon, at last. Not many people have this one in Australia, and it is probably one of the more sought after Mariano types. Now, another Mariano. This is a pink version, but with speckled. Really lovely. There's two types here. I know, I know I can get the name of this one, but I'll have to get it labelled right. This is another new one for us here too. Now, one of the lovely ones, this one's another miniature Mariano, and we call coffee bean. And it really does look like little coffee beans. Beautiful red tips, beautiful coffee colour. This one's magnificent. I really like this one. Little shrub. Obviously, reasonably tall, upright growing. Here we are, there's a new one too. Another new variety, Hemisphericus. And we have another real miniature. This is probably the most miniature one here. Diabolicus, Hemisphericus Diabolicus. And that's about it for my Andromiscus. We've, we've probably collected 50 or 60 new hybrids in the last few years by importing into Australia. And for me, this is really great fun. I love, I love doing it. Yeah, this is the best Andromiscus book you can get with uh, Pilbeam Rogerson and Mr. Tr Derek Tribble. They wrote this in conjunction and it is actually available online free as a download. So uh, if you really want to learn more about Andromiscus, this is the best way to do it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of succulents and indeed a whole range of plants. And as always, good luck with your gardening.